Hello, I am George Arthur Leroux, sometimes called Sufi George but that doesn't matter here. I am probably the last surviving Boston beatnik poet. The others were a little older and drank alcohol to keep them angry so they could write more angry poems, and they took drugs to wake themselves up to go breakfast hunting, so I figure they are dead now. The local cafeteria was the usual choice for breakfast. People leave, half of their meal behind, and into the chair, slips a beatnik poet. My poetry is different. It comes to me. It just begins flowing in my mind and I write it down. When I first entered a Boston beatnik coffee house, I was greeted with, I hear you're a poet. I answered that I only record poetry. And actually I don't even like poetry. I dropped out of my poetry class in graduate school because I couldn't figure out where the hell they were coming from. Okay, so I didn't finish graduate school. One poem from my college days exploded out of me so fast I could barely keep up with writing it down. My roommate walked in and I couldn't even stop to say hi back to him. When I was done, I jumped up and shouted to him. I've just described the creation of the universe. I'll read that one to you in a minute. The beatniks were certainly a low-budget enterprise. Our publications reflected that. I published my first somewhat crude-looking book as a 20-year-old beatnik, called it The Hunting Poise. I sold it on the sidewalk outside the cafeteria. We called that area Coffee Corner. It was pretty well known. We did get a lot of tourist traffic. And I sold enough books to buy food at the counter. One guy traded an electric fan for a book, and I sold the fan to the next guy for $7. My book was only $2.50. So this one beatnik friend, some kind of mystic, lived by scrounging off me, because I did work now and then, so with the fan money in his fixed gaze, he invited me to a meal. It's okay, I had more books to sell. My newest book is called, The Game is Played on a Delicate Foundation. It's my earlier books rolled into one, plus new stuff. And it doesn't look at all, low budget. So I'm going to skip over the title poem and go directly to the poem I told you about. It's called, The Creation. Out of the substanceless of nothingness created he he. And one day the very neutral nothingness, the very arbitrarily neutral nothingness became a positive nothingness and a negative nothingness because it didn't really make any difference. And then the positive nothingness looked around one day and with the neutral nothingness as its eyes it looked and beheld the negative nothingness and said well what is this thing all about? And since we are practically neighbors and it is kind of lonely around here let's have a party. We can sit on this neutral nothingness and talk it won't really care very much. And then the negative nothingness heard this soundless voice coming out of the edges of the neutral nothingness and it listened with the neutral nothingness as its ears and heard an invitation something about having a party or something. And then the negative nothingness looked around a little to see what was going on it just stood there for a little while and looked at the positive nothingness and said well what do you know here I was all alone and didn't even know it how about that boy you learn something every day. And then the positive nothingness waved his hand which was actually only the neutral nothingness which didn't really care whether it was waved or not. And the negative nothingness waved his hand back which was only the neutral nothingness which didn't realize that here it was waving at both ends and didn't know whether it was waving at itself or what but it didn't really care very much about that sort of thing anyways. And then the acknowledgement of each other's existence was completed and the negative nothingness decided that he would answer a question which he assumed came from the positive nothingness even if it did sound like it came from the neutral nothingness. But it was obvious to the negative nothingness that the neutral nothingness really couldn't be bothered less about talking or not talking or things like that. You know what I mean, anyways. The negative nothingness said well I guess that a party isn't such a bad idea at that but I can't think of anything worse. Um, that's the end. Of the poem. You can cheer me wildly now. <laughs>